Welcome and thank you for joining us for the second half hour of The Factor Uncensored. We turn to Ohio now, where a political candidate is being blocked from running for the state house because of a law. According to that law, Vanessa Joy, a transgender woman, will not be allowed to be on the ballot for next month's primary. She's refused to share her former name on petitions, which goes against the law for candidates there. They're all required to share any name changes within the past five years. That that former name is called a dead name in the transgender community, meaning it's dead to them. They no longer use it. Now, we're told the subject of, of thinking about your birth name can be traumatic for some in the community. We have a couple of members of the transgender community here to explain. Joining us, Joel Espute, Mo Jenkins, who is running for a spot in the Texas House, and commentator Lewis Hunter. Lewis is not transgender, but he's here. <laughs> want to thank you guys. So when we talk about dead name, mm -hmm. and I was talking to, we were talking about it in our editorial meeting that it could be traumatic or just bad memories for some. Explain that to me, either one of you. Yeah, so it's kind of like shedding clothes after you just got, you know, pig blood on you, like in the Carrie movie. Mm -hmm. It's like taking off that piece of you that's no longer a part of you. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to be reminded about the bad things that happened to you, either under that name or the things that people called you while under that name. We understand in the transgender community, we're going to open ourselves up to scrutiny, but at the same time, we should be respected. Mm -hmm. We're qualified human beings, and we should be respected. So if I present to you as Mo, you don't need to know what my other name was. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Joel? Um, so using dead names is violence. It's absolute violence. It's not just uh, that was your dead name. It's not, oh, your current name. And is really quick, so I can clearly, and the viewer can clear. when you say violence by using the name, what does that mean? So when I say violence, I mean using the dead name leads to violence. So using someone's dead name, mm -hmm. the name that they do not choose to be, and it's not a choice, but the name that they do not choose to go by, it can lead to violence or acts of violence. Mm -hmm. And so when you did your application to run for political office, what did you decide to do? Yeah, so... Um, or in, did you need to do anything like in Ohio? So in Texas, they do ask you for your full legal name. Um, so I did put down my full legal name, as is the, the case for me. Um, I still go by my full legal name. I still go by Morel. It's part of my um, who I am, and it's part of my family heritage. Uh, but I do have trans friends who are thinking about running who do not want to have to end up putting their debt name on their application. They go want to go by the name that they go by in their community and that they've been using in their community to fight for. So it's those. more of a case by case. You're not traumatized by it. Yeah, it's it's a case by case yeah. basis, but still, you know, all trans people are not built the same. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't advocate for people to go around using people's dead name. Like Joelle said, it can lead to violence. If you go around calling a trans person by their dead name, that can incite other people to come around, start using that name, and at times get physical with them. And so we have to be careful about asking people to disclose names that they no longer go by. All right, Lewis, let's hear from you. Uh, I don't call it a dead name. I'll call it a legal name, and we all have one. There are, there are parts of our past that we would like to shed, that uh, bad experiences, bad memories that we all have. That doesn't make them not happen. You know, you cannot ignore your past. Um, it's a part of who you are. Uh, th this this lady that uh, or guy whatever she wants to watch go your by words. Oh, well whatever she, she wants to go by no, I don't words. have to watch my words Actually, because see yes, I live in a world words. where I can I I can deal watch with people words. in the way that I want to deal with them watch your now words. if That's you don't, if you facts. expect me to, to live in your fantasy it's not a right? fantasy watch that is your words. fantasy it's not that a that is fantasy. your fantasy so if a so if a white person called you the n word see you can't equate being transgender to racism okay okay let's Joy, let's let him finish and then we'll let you yes. follow up. Okay, so uh, the, the man or woman who's running for office, um, she broke the law. It's simple and plain. Now, whether or not that law was in the candidate registry or candidate paperwork really means nothing. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And that goes for anyone under any condition, whether you're transgender, gay, or straight. It doesn't matter. So to feel as though you're exempt or you're special simply because you identify sexually uh, or, or your gender identity is different is kind of, I mean, it's kind of, it, it's stupid, I'll be honest with you. You know, and, and to expect someone to take part in that, the, the entire world to take part in that, 
You know, either you want the truth or you want to be lied to. And that goes for anybody under any circumstance. I don't care who you are. And the candidate's name is Vanessa Joy, for future reference. Uh, Joel, go ahead. So I think it's interesting that you're saying that when, I would say 30 to 50 years ago when Jim Crow was act of law and you were against the law, I bet it would it would have been a different story if we were talking about that. And we always seem to, it's so interesting that there we don't get, seem to get choked up about race, but yet when we step outside of race, boom, you want to get this conservative. Ha, this has no, 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 because I let you talk, so let me talk. So 30 years ago, when it was illegal to be black, when there were laws that were in the book, in 1990, some of those laws, in 1990, laws, it was actually, illegal yeah, to be in black. Some, in some places, there are still on. laws on the and book. See, this is how ignorance persists. Are you going to let me talk? Because I let you talk. It was illegly black in 1990. Are you going to really? let me talk? That's what we're okay. putting out. So here and we go. I said 30 to 50 years. Okay, Joel. Joel, we'll be right back after this and. Welcome back to the fact on Censored. We continue our conversation about a sensitive subject in the transgender community, bringing up or asking for someone's dead name, which is a name they were giving at birth, which it, uh, our guests are back to talk about it. We have Joel Espew, Mo Jenkins, who is running for a spot in the Texas legislature, and Lewis Hunter. So, Mo, my question for you, what if the constituents or the voting block in a particular district want to do their own research on a mm -hmm. candidate, but all you get is a name that they're giving you and you don't, you can't go into their background, you can't look at who they have been in the past and what they've done. So right. do you think that's fair to a voter? I would say when voters are doing their research, yes, they do need to be critical, but I've introduced myself to you as Mo, um, and it's particularly for me, if you Google Mo Jenkins, you're going to find everything about me. I've gone by Mo since I was about 17 years old. Anything before that, all you're going to find is my mother's obituary, and that's not going to be relevant to you making your decision. Especially here in Texas, um, when you make a legal name change, that also applies to any legal records that are attached to your dead name. Mm -hmm. So if you Google Mo Jenkins once I've finished my process, but if it'll you make bring that, it up. But if you that legal name change, right. then this wouldn't even be an issue, right? Right, and it wouldn't be an issue, but you still have people who are going to ask you, well, what was your name before? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what did you go by before? Well, what did your mama name you? Okay, well, you weren't there when my mama named you, ma named me. I'm here with you right now, conversing with you as a voter. And if you have any other concerns, feel free to ask me those, and I will alleviate those. But you don't get to pry into my personal business that's going to bring up traumatic events for me. You don't know what happened in that past. Mm -hmm. And so ask your questions as a voter, but you don't have to go nasty and negative. Mm -hmm. You could just be respectful. Because at the end of the day, trans candidates are qualified human beings, period. All right. Lewis, your thoughts on looking into someone's background if they're running for office. Obviously, we know what happened in New York with the uh, senator who just got booted out, but is that important to Absolutely know? Absolutely it is. I think, you know, we know George Bush snorted cocaine in college. We know that uh, 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 Obama smoked marijuana. You know, every political candidate is going to have their, their past scrutinized. My issue comes with the fact that a large part of this community feels that any logic-based criticism is oppressive, is somehow mean-spirited. No, sometimes it's just fact. You know, if you have a legal name, there are rules. You don't follow, you can't run. They put you off the ballot. It's that simple. To kind of equate this to racism or, or slavery or Jim Crow is an emotional stretch. And I think that that's part of the problem of why this community has operated the way that it has and has been received the way that it has. If someone wants to be something, they have every right. You have every right to have your peer group address you in any way that, that they are willing to address you. You cannot expect the rest of the world to bend to you in, in that same fashion. And, I and if I want, you can and be I upset, but we can, lock, we can lock mm -hmm. up if okay. that's the case. Yeah. I, I have right. a question for sure. you. Who is the current Speaker of the Texas House? Why does that matter? I, no, I want, I want to know. Who is the current Speaker of the Texas House? I have no clue. Okay, well, his name is Dade Phelan, but that's not his legal name. But he still gets to go by Dade Phelan, and you don't have people attacking did he him. File, requesting... Did he file the paperwork let per me the law? You don't have people attacking him. In Texas, and I want to come back to okay. in Texas because that's where we are, if I tell you my name is Mo Jenkins, my sign said, my website said MoJenkins.com, if you go there, that is who I am. You do realize that in and Ohio so they have the four the day, other transgender candidates so that are running that. for exactly. public office right now. Who did not so disclose this is, their this legal is not, name. Yes, they did, they did and it's not, not discriminatory. 
did not. They did not. Did you not. didn't you read. Do your research. You didn't read. Do your research. I did not. I don't know what it's like, guys. All right, Joel, let's hear from you. I think it's interesting that you say that, but I just want to know if a white person said, you know what? Oh my God. And I'm going to keep going there. So you can, oh my gosh, all you want to, but I'm going to keep going there. If a white person did the exact same thing to you as a black man, which they did do in the past, you would be falling out and rolling all on the floor. Can I ask but you a question? But it's an issue. What no, actually you can't because you're not rights, the interviewer. What rights do you not have right now? You can do anything that I can do. So for you to act as if somehow you're being oppressed, that's a fantasy I didn't act that like you, I'm being you, you have become I'm making a accustomed to being this victim. I didn't victim act like and I didn't you say. Are not. I didn't say I was you a victim. Can, you, I'm, you, making, a, I'm you equated, making a correlation. You equate it to Jim Crow. I'm making a correlation. What's the correlation? Because you clearly What's aren't the correlation? seeing it. What you can, clearly what aren't seeing it. I'm making the correlation. And Again, clearly, I just feel as if not okay. the oppression is romanticized. I'm not it's playing oppression Olympics with you. I'm right. not playing oppression Olympics this, this, with you. This person did Vanessa the, Joy. was not uh, Vanessa Joy was not allowed to run because she did not follow the law. And ignorance is no excuse of the law. And I don't care if you're running for public office or selling cocaine or assaulting someone. You can't claim ignorance. That's just what it is. And Mo for those who say the law is a law. And if the law requires her, and it's our understanding that this was a little used law mm -hmm. that they brought up intentionally for this, but mm -hmm. if the law is the law, why shouldn't she have to follow it, Vanessa Joy? And you know what? I I'm going to say this. Um, the law is applied sparingly, right? And so we see that all the time. But another thing as a candidate is... I, I'm fortunate I work in the legislature, so I understand when laws are changing, but not everyone can go and see every single law that's been put on the books. And so that's why we depend on secretaries of state to put together the candidate guidelines to let us know the things that we have to follow. So I want to say that's first on the secretary of state's office for not ensuring that that was in there, but also shame on all the other county boards who didn't say, hey, maybe we should speak up and make sure that folks know about this so we're not oppressing a marginalized community. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Interesting conversation here.